Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking a little bit more about social engineering. And social engineering is basically the art of manipulating people or convincing people to give you uh, some information, either knowingly or unknowingly. That way they can use that information to either impersonate you or get more access to certain areas or certain uh, information that they shouldn't have access to. Uh, social engineering is based on the principle that most people are uh, trusting and they want to be helpful. The average person you meet on the street wants to try to help people who are in need. Um, and social engineers really take advantage of this, uh, this act that, uh, or this ability f of people to, to be helpful and to generally trust the, the overall population. Uh, social engineers also take advantage of the, of, of the fact that most people also don't really want to take responsibility for certain situations. So whenever somebody sees somebody doing something uh, that might be suspicious, uh, unless their job is to stop that person, they don't really want to get involved. They don't want confrontation. So the fact that humans are relatively trusting, they want to be helpful, and they don't really want confrontation, uh, this helps show social engineers to get access to information or access to physical areas. And, and whenever we're talking about online, access to information online, um, that they shouldn't have access to. So it's a very powerful method. Uh, in the physical world, social engineering basically uh, helps us to gain access and gain information. Um, think about at your work, if somebody comes into your office and tells you, I'm here to fix the telephone. If they look like a telephone repair person, you'll probably let them into your office to fix their telephone and you won't really question their credentials. So in that case, somebody could social engineer you by pretending to be the telephone uh, fixing person and um, they could implant some device on your phone or basically do whatever they want inside your office for that time. In the digital world, it's also about gaining access or gaining information. So we want to get this information about maybe somebody's um, computer or some documents that they have on that computer. Um, Instead of just physically walking up to their computer, we might just send an email that says, click here to reset your password. And many people, as long as it looks like it's related to something that they normally do, they might click on that email, uh, reset their, their username and password, but actually they're just giving that information to the social engineer. So the social engineer is just setting up a situation that can trick the person into providing more access or more information, uh, basically because people don't check to make sure that these people actually should be the ones um, accessing this information. So social engineering is one of the most effective ways to steal confidential data um, because it targets the, the biggest weakness, which is normally the human element. Uh, most employees are completely unaware that they're being manipulated. Um, so social engineers go into companies and they can get access to many different areas inside the company. They can get access to a lot of different information and the people that are helping them don't know that this person isn't allowed to be in, in the area because the person has successfully socially engineered them. The same in digital systems. Uh, people think that they uh, are giving information to trustworthy people, but actually they're just revealing their login credentials or some other confidential information to that person that shouldn't have access. So what information is useful in social engineering? And it really depends on what the goal of the social engineer is. It's usually about gaining access to areas or access to information. Uh, so information that might be very helpful would be things like names, job descriptions, department names, um, any internal lingo or internal speech that a company might use. If a social engineer can get access to that information, they might be able to convince someone, either over the telephone or in person, that they actually belong inside the company and they've been there a while and they should get access to certain pieces of information inside that company. Um, online, kind of the same thing. If we have your name or we have your department or your boss's name, we can pretend to be the IT department and then you might give us your, your personal information or information that you really shouldn't be giving out uh, to random people. But as long as we social engineer it properly, you might give that information. So uh, some tactics, uh, I won't go too much into tactics for social engineering, but a couple of them are pretexting and this is basically creating a fake scenario. So people think 
that a scenario exists whenever it actually doesn't. So basically convincing people that uh, there's some problem that they need to respond to. So for example, if you call up uh, somebody at their work and say, uh, we, we noticed that the internet is not working very well today, we'll send a technician over uh, very shortly to fix your computer. So then people will say, well, I didn't have a problem, but okay, a technician will come and fix my computer shortly. So they've kind of, they're then prepared for someone to come and work on their computer. They don't know what they're going to do, but somebody will come. So then we send a social engineer to get access to that computer, and we can essentially take the computer over that way. Uh, phishing is trying to trick people into giving information away. And this is like those emails that basically say, click here to re, uh, reset your password. By the way, we also need your username and your uh, phone number and your address and all this other information as well. Uh, fake websites are a type of social engineering, and that just relies on the fact that people don't normally check whether the domain is the correct domain for the website they want to go to or certificates are correct. Uh, fake pop-ups also give this kind of impression that something is wrong with your computer system and it will convince the person that they need to act to solve a problem even though they don't have a problem. Usually solving the problem um, actually creates the problem in their computer in the first place. And then baiting is also a relatively, I won't say new, but um, interesting form of social engineering. Uh, let's say we wanted to target a specific company and we need to get a virus inside their network. Well, one of the easiest ways to do that is to drop USB sticks um, with a virus loaded on the USB stick in front of the building of the company you're targeting. Someone is very likely to pick that USB stick up and then put it into their computer to check whose USB stick this is. And as soon as they insert it into their computer, you might, um, you might have uh, access, basically, to their entire network. Okay, so next... Um, so some examples, there's lots of examples of social engineering. It happens all the time, both online and offline. Um, one that I, a couple that I really want to talk about here, um, in the Korean situation, because of the Korean uh, organizations are very hierarchical, usually. Um, think about if you're a Korean and your boss asks you to do something, will you check to make sure that that was actually a request from your boss or not, right? So using this knowledge, if I'm pretending to be the secretary of your boss and I command you to give some information or send some money or, or do something, um, would you question it? If, you, if you're not sure whether you would actually check whether your boss said this or not, or if it was just some random person asking for this, then you are potentially susceptible to social engineering. And this is a, a, a big uh, concern, right? Because uh, the boss has a lot of control in, in most Korean organizations, and people don't normally check whether it's actually the boss's word or not. And a lot of different types of social engineering happen this way. There was a case in uh, China where a Chinese businessman, his computer, the computer of his computer and his secretary's computer had been hacked, it had a virus for a very long time. And whenever he went on a trip to Japan, specifically to buy art in Japan, uh, the secretary received an email from the CEO saying, uh, send a million dollars to this account in Japan, I'm going to buy some art. So the secretary just said, okay, this is from the CEO in, in, who's currently in Japan. It looks like a legitimate request. So the secretary sent the money to this account in, in Japan. And it turned out that actually the computer had been hacked and hackers were watching this and they were waiting until a certain situation happened where they could pretend to be the CEO because the secretary does not want to question her boss whether he actually asked that or not. She just sent the money directly and uh, basically the hackers got the money that way. The money was sent and they lost it. So social engineering is a very powerful tool because it relies on social society, right? So it all comes down to uh, not verifying who the request is from, not checking, not auditing, essentially. Um, make sure you're always uh, checking who is making requests and what information they're asking for. Um, so there's lots of different ways to protect yourself, but basically verifying the identity of people and um, information sources is the most critical part. It is worth, especially if money is involved, it is worth asking 
whether uh, the boss did ask for the, the money to be sent. It is worth checking whether the website domain name is correct. And if you can do those things, then it will make social engineering at least a little bit more difficult. So that was uh, kind of my quick rundown of social engineering. Um, it is a very interesting technique that's used offline and online, and it is very powerful. And most attacks we see now um, rely on some type of social engineering at least to get into the network. For example, sending somebody an email with a virus attached to it, they're relying on somebody to download that attachment, open the attachment up, and install the virus on their computer. Once that happens, then everything else is a technical attack. But it was social engineering that got us into the network in the first place. So that's it for today. Thank you very much.